Hello, and welcome back to Gotham Sound and Communications coverage of NAB 2024, Gotham Sound, where you can buy and rent sound stuff. I'm here with Andrew Jones from Deity. Hi, Andrew. How are you guys? I am in a bit of a food coma. How are you? I had a walking Quiznos sandwich, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I haven't had Quiznos in like years. Okay. So like that was like joy. Their mayonnaise, I don't know what's different, but like Quiznos hits. Okay. Uh, maybe tomorrow, because I had some pizza that I will not slander, but it was not good. So <laughs> No, um, no, it's not good here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll but, slander it. But it was expensive. So you felt fancy. Yeah, I felt very fancy. It was a great cardboard box. Anyway, so we're here to talk about sound stuff, not food. That's another show. Um, what is new from Didi? I hear there's a list. There's a list. The ones that are kind of the most important to the audience here at Gotham are the ones that I've pulled aside for you guys to see. You guys know us for USB-C everything mm -hmm. on every device. So we've come out with a USB-C power supply that kind of supplies it for everything. It's 140 watts of power and a single power brick. Classic GAN charger. It's made out of water. Uh, uh, right here. It's Hello. made out of fire resistant material. It's also got short circuit protection, overload protection. It will do 140 watts on the USB-C jack here on the top. It will also do 100 watts out of the second one. And of course, the bottom one, even though it's a type A, will still handle 45 watts. So if you need to split it up across all your devices, charging at the same time, it's got enough overhead to charge your Slate, your TC1s, and your DCQC2 chargers all at the same time. And it's going to do it all in a very reasonable amount of time. The amount of power that this thing puts out will take a MacBook from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes. So that's kind of one of like the weirdest things. It's the, also the less intricate that we're going to get into today. But we kind of want to just throw it out there that it's one of those, we're thinking about how you guys are travel doc, you are sound mixers on the move, you want to carry less because things now... You're having to carry more and more every single day. And the last thing you want to do is some barrel jack, weird voltage item that only works with that one item. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Make it all universal. I mean, I have a bottle of wine in my backpack, so there's all sorts of weird stuff people carry. Yeah. Well, it, uh, is it sparkling or not? Now I want to know. Uh, it is Chilean, actually. One of our, uh, one of a very nice customer um, had it for me, which We're is We're back crazy. to the food show. I know. Back to the food back show. Back to the food anyway, show. Anyway, what else is in the kitchen? <laughs> well, what we've also got here is our new power distro. So our smart power distro, the SPD. This is the mini version. It's a much thinner. It's only about 22 millimeters thin. So you can slide this into a small, nice bag. Toggle switch allows you to toggle on. The output's two, three, four, and five. The question I have for you guys in the audience down in the comment section below or live in the chat is, do you want output one also toggled or not? We can't figure out what we want to do with that. We do want to hear from you guys because we're a feedback-driven brand. But So all in all, you have four Hirose compatible outputs. Number one also carries a smart battery telemetry data from the input over. So if you have an 8 series, you can still read that in your 8 series menu. And then what's really nice is we also have these pogo pins in this weird shape, right? These pogo pins allow us to dock it to another device that has the receptions for those pogo pins. And what I can do is, with magnets, guide it all together. And with our four corner screws, we can actually lock this together to act as one unit and slide it into a bag. You may say, well, what's the other unit that we're talking about? It's the RF distro that we just came out with at the show. It's got two BNC ends. These are active ends, so they'll run a powered antenna if you want. Independently, I can toggle them on or off. And it also gives me an overload protection switch right there, as well as a little LED indicator to kind of say, hey, dial it back a little bit in your antenna gain. Maybe add the pad. Whatever you need. It is also an active switch. Uh, so as that one antenna is coming in, it's splitting off and compensating for the RF loss to bring it back up to net neutral so that all your receivers are getting what's closest as possible to what the actual unit received from your actual antennas. So it's a two to four on either side, so A and B setup. And then for power, again, four pin Hirose uh, compatible input, USB-C, and again, those pogo pins for three different ways of powering this little RF distro. So these two units are going to be selling separately and shipping over the summer. And then we've got the WLOV Pro 3-pin Limo. This is also new at the show, so this is going to be a kit you can buy for about $239. So this is compatible with all 3-pin Limo transmitters on the market since we're all kind of using the same standard now. And then the other big thing 
Here's I'm the show. I'm just going to open oh, it up yeah, and that's, show that's just because it's, it's a cool box. But it, you know, this yeah, is, there's uh, a couple accessories in there. We've also got a new accessory dedicated kit that's full of just little odds and ends oh. and a couple of things packed in the same kind of case that's for cute. about $39. That's mm -hmm. Four millimeter lavalier compatible, which of course is WLF Pro, mm -hmm. and a few others out on the market. And then here I've got the new Theos transmitter, the DXTX, a part of the Theos ecosystem. 32 bit float record with time code, and it will transmit and record at the same time, even here in the United States. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. Say that again. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to transmit and record in the United States. There we go. Okay. Uh, it'll do 48 volt phantom. It'll do line level. It'll also handle uh, 5 volt bias for video microphones that are passive. So if you have some microphones over there that you want to trigger either through their smart 3.5 millimeter adapters, like the Rode VideoMic NTG, and you want to take it off the camera onto a boom, this will also work with it, which natively most XLR ports won't. We no longer need giant dongles hanging off the top of this to get there. We can actually just do it natively. And then further, it also has AES-3 modes 1 and 2 and AES-42 modes 1 and 2. Mm, and we did just see a, a new microphone that uh, I think a lot of people are going to be sweet on. So this could be a good yeah. solution for that new uh, CMD-42. Very cool. The D is for digital. Very cool. I have no idea what CNM are for, but it's fine. No. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to go stop over there. And then, of course, it's got an external SMA micro SD card and it's multi-band mm -hmm. using our kind of classic system that the rest of the Theos also does. Yeah, great, fantastic. And then uh, something that the YouTube audience has been asking for every single day for a year now, where's the PR2? It's going to be shipping next month. So you guys go check a look at Gotham and you'll be able to get it over there next month when this starts shipping. 32-bit float mono, 24-bit stereo, and it's also got the ability to do timecode output. Uh, and it's got some other little features we're going to be enabling over the summer via some firmware that we haven't quite yet confirmed that talks about some cross-branding with some other products. Oh, interesting. Tease, tease, tease. tease okay, tease. great. Um, so let's see, a couple of um, questions here from the audience, so or comments really. But, okay, uh, cool. Juan, um, Juan says, you know, it's impressive how many products you guys come out with every year, which really it is. I mean, this is only... What? There's only some count. of them, this yeah. This is six, but there's double that. Yeah, there's the whole S Mic 3 series over there with the dead wit uh, dead cats coming out, mm -hmm. the W01 uh, and W02. We also just did a partnership with Radius Windshields. Uh, they're doing our shock mount systems for all of our new mics. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then there's like some oddball little things like cables. Yeah. That we're not even going to talk yeah. about. They're cables. They connect one and two things together. And now, um, so... Uh, what is it? Matt wants to know about the, the duck. Yes. The duck. No, let's call it the uh, duck. The duck. Um, the duck. When, uh, what's the shipping date and approximate cost? Approximate. You approximate can say anyway. cost. Uh, it's going to be somewhere between four to five hundred. Uh, shipping date, we're looking at end of summer. Okay. Uh, so hopefully before IBC. So that end of August, early September kind of uh, release schedule. The DLTX, our pro transmitter that we kind of announced last year, but and it's still being worked on, that's going to be shipping midsummer. So that'll ship first, then the duck will come out. Mm, got it. Okay. And then uh, let's see. Oh, can the Limo 3 body pack? Um, Let me grab it. Yeah. So let's see. Does that, because that has phantom power. This also has too. phantom power too. Will that work with AES? No. Okay. No, no we figured out the AES thing a little late. Mm -hmm. This was already kind of locked in down and done so limo won't have it xlr will and will the receiver output aes our current receiver does not have aes future receivers will okay there we go christopher great questions thank you um all right so let's also see. there's a there's an easter egg on the website with what the name of the future receiver is good luck oh okay yeah. very good <laughs> um so uh, Jeff is just confirming the DTX is no longer U.S. or global. It's just one version of the transmitter. DX, TX is DX, just, TX, that's it. Technically. Technically. Uh, I, legally still here in the U.S., we have to sell stuff that when you open it out of the box, broadcast on these bands. And when you leave the country, you can do other things. But like when you open it here, it needs to be like in the FCC guided, these are the rules. Mm -hmm. So there's still going to be technically a U.S. model. And there'll still be a global model, but hardware-wise, 
for all intensive purposes, identical. Great. It's just FCC rules and how we have to sell the unit on open box. Um, Leonard wants to know, where is the D4RX already? Smiley face. Where is it? Is that the Easter egg on the website? Yeah. I love Easter. Easter's uh, great. Awesome. Yeah, so we hid that this morning. It was found within about 30 minutes. <laughs> um, you guys are hardcore fans. Um, where is it? It's uh, funny enough, it is in a Gotham video from the Gotham Expo last year. Last year, I remember that. So go watch that. Okay, there we go. That was all leaked literally a year ago. You just know the model name now. But that was uh, <laughs> when we talked about all the features. Okay. So go enjoy the Gotham YouTube channel. So uh, Castillo Sound Direct uh, has a couple of questions. Number one, the output level of the TX will be improved to work with high ohm headphones. High ohm. High ohm headphones. Uh, so I, maybe the receiver. Email. There's uh, so we ended up ooh, not on this model. Uh -huh. uh, we removed the headphones from the DLTX. Only the DBTX is still going to have headphones. Uh, and that's mostly because at this level, you do have utility operators and people who help out in all of that regards. Uh, we also added via the um, uh, BitConnectify 2.0 system in these units. You can actually monitor these units from your phone mm. by hitting the headphone jack inside us audio. So you can actually tap into these devices and kind of do a quick little reference monitor uh, in them that way. So we don't need headphone jacks on these as well. Got it. Okay. Uh, second question from Castillo Sound Direct. Um, will the line input on the transmitter be pro or consumer level? Great question. I don't have the proper answer. I would assume it's the exact same as what other models are. So that's the negative 10 dB consumer grade line. Uh, mostly because at the end of the day, that's what most of our customers are utilizing. Um, and that seemed to make the most sense. Yeah, and certainly yeah. like cables and adapters and a lot of things output negative 10 anyway, even right. The, the and also stuff. there's there's a uh, it's not like when you switch the line, we also don't let you touch the gain. So you could actually add negative gain to your transmitter, negative gain to your signal out of your other devices. You can fine tune it. You can make it work. Absolutely. All right. And third question, uh, does the plug on have a limiter? Yes. So the DLTX has an analog limiter, the plug on. So the way the plug-on's working is it has the 32-bit float signal, and we pull a single 24-bit off of that, and then that hits an analog limiter. So the transmitted signal hits the analog limiter. The 32-bit float signal stays raw at the micro SD card oh. with timecode. Okay. So it kind of dual systems. Uh, if what you're trying to do is also record 24-bit, it routes it through and then routes it back to the recorder. Now, does the, the DXTX support uh, encryption? The DLTX supports encryption. It's not enabled yet. Mm -hmm. And what you're reading right now is the fact that the D4RX will enable encryption in the future. In the future. Got it's it. built in now. We needed to build the hardware in. It's not turned on. Got it. When it does get turned on, from my understanding, uh, we're using a pass key type system where you input a key system. And if you put the key into the receivers that you want it to receive, it'll receive itself. It's like seven characters and like 30 different options for characters. Some close to like nearly 5 trillion pass keys for encryption. Should be pretty good once it's all out. Still in the very early stages. Can you use the password password? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, great. I want it. You'll know we how will to let find you be me. Ir irresponsible. Um, all right, let's see. So is the AES mode on the yeah, on the duck um, analog or uh, mono? Uh, sorry, <laughs> stereo or mono? It has both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in fact, I've been told if I get a screwdriver, I can swap out some stuff here on the front end, and we can even do... Uh, five pin? Uh, five pin. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we haven't done it yet in the booth. It just came in on a piece of paper. We've... We haven't taken them apart yet. We'll probably do it on the last day and send out some photos so that everyone can kind of see what's going on. But it, we've been told that it will support 5-pin, if not on launch day, very shortly after launch. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Uh, more comments. So uh, Leonard says, D4RX with AES. That's great news. Seems like Deity is really going pro with this one. Uh, They're trying. It's, it's all comment. because of you guys and your feedback. Um, that's really nice. Um, so, uh, Brandon Costa says, with the new DXTX being able to record internally and transmit, can that feature be added to the Theos? Well, let's break it down and we'll go backwards, okay? 
what is Theos? Theos is our ecosystem. That's our idea of what our UHF, digital UHF wireless system is. So if something is a Theos, it's in that ecosystem. So that's just kind of help understand this is, for this, if it was a connect, that was our old system. So this stuff doesn't talk there, that stuff doesn't talk here. This is for Theos. So that's kind of how Theos should be kind of thought of as. Can this and that feature show up in other things? No. Uh, this is a non-wearable, non-hideable, non-pocketable transmitter. Uh, so it is allowed, but all the others still need to obey the law, and we're, of course, going to obey the law. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, so a, a vote about the toggle switch. Uh, Martin says uh, no toggled for output one. No toggled. No toggled. One for no toggled. Um, also wants to know if the, the three-pin limo on the lav is factory molded or if that is just soldered on. I think it's looks well, like I think it's soldered it's on. Soldered on. Yeah, I, it looks like I don't know if it's molded. To me. But, uh, that looks like a... I can't... Oh, you I'm can gonna, do it. I'm going to... Pull it right off. Yeah, that is... That's soldered. That's I think soldered. it's just a classic kind of limo connector. Uh, it is limo branded, so I imagine that means soldered. Yeah. Uh, just like the actual Limo port on the DLTX, it's Limo branded. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no fakes here. And then, of course, even on the the duck, that's a Neutrik locking connector that you've seen on other wireless before. Okay. Why reinvent the wheel? Um, Charlie wants to know what are the prices for the power and antenna distro. So the distro for power, the SPD Mini, it's probably about the same price. Uh, the manufacturing cost, even though it looks slimmer. It has actually more metal because it's not extruded. It's all CNC'd. So manufacturing cost is about the same for us, as well as feature sets are nearly identical. Uh, so it's probably going to cost about the same. It's mostly going to come down to, do you want something that's going to work better on a cart big bag or on a small bag? Hmm. Um, and then when it comes to the distro, I think we're looking at around 550 to 600. Uh, and that's kind of just... Feels like a good solid price point given the fact that it's less than all the others and still kind of a slimmer, nicer, small package. And, and is that going to do, you know, 470 to 9 something or what's So the... it's 470 to 1 gigahertz. Okay. Um, and it's it's a really clean RF preamp. Nice. Uh, that's compensating for the loss of the actual split. That is the important part of that. Um, does the WLAV uh, come in beige or other colors? What's that? Does the W Lav come in beige or other colors? Not anymore. Dun, dun, uh, yeah, uh. it's black only right now. Uh, maybe we'll bring back a beige and other colors in the future, but we've had to dial it back. The beige uh, just didn't move a lot, and there was a lot of shelf space in order for everything else new. That mm -hmm. all had to get cleared out so the new stuff can fit. Got it. Okay, more questions. Tons of questions for Andrew. You're going to get exhausted. What exactly is. BitConnectify. I don't know what that means. Great question. We probably should do a better job with a white paper online. BitConnectify is our heavily modified version of a Bluetooth 5 standard mm -hmm. of data. This is handling our time code, our remote control functionality, our audio monitoring of some of our newer devices. BitConnectify 1 has a limit of 20 devices to one phone. BitConnectify 2 has a 48 to one phone device limit. And BitConnectify 2 also has some extra broadcast functionalities not yet turned on. Mm. Future. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I never, never buy anything I say that's not on, on shipping day. Don't ever buy anything based on firmware that's promised to you. Yeah. It does this, and that's pretty good, too. Yep. Um, all right. So let's see. Christopher I don't want to lie to people. Oh. I don't want to get their hopes up. Oh, what if I know. fail? What if I die? Don't do either I, of those I know. Things. I don't want to do either of those things. Yeah. Have, Mostly the fail thing. <laughs> have some more coffee. Um, all right. Uh, Christopher wants to know, uh, can you jam LTC into the, the plug-on and the PR2, or do they only sync with the rest of the Deity ecosystem? Great question. So we actually support both wireless jam, so either from the phone or from a TC1 that you've hit the sync button to, mm -hmm. but we also support hardwire. So if you're on another ecosystem, Come on over. Just get a proper cable hardwired in. As soon as you have timecode sync, unplug, and the internal timecode generator in the units will take over. And I know if you're thinking, like, well, I'm supposed to always leave things plugged in. These have the same internal timecode clocks as our TC1s. So it's like having a TC1 built in. 
Mm, nice. Um, Jeff wants to know, uh, does the DXTX have different antennas for global and U.S. versions? I assume that's just based it's on the, the same frequency. thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's if you buy it here in the U.S., you're going to get your three antenna bands for your 500, your 600 and your 900. By the way, check out the firmware update. If you're a current Theos user, we opened up 941. Oh, so kind of a little sneak peek. I don't know if we've actually ever told it's, it's been out. I don't know if we told anyone. So that's a new little Gotham only exclusive. But of course, if you're on the global side, I don't know what your frequencies are. So we're going to give you two antennas that you can cut to any frequencies you need. And it's going to come with a chart for where you should use your wire snips. Nice. Um, all right, more questions. Uh, Theos IEM, single receiver in the pipeline, question mark. Is that That's what you sad. want to see? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Just give us a little, sh you know, short jacket off I don't the know. shoulder. What do you want to see? Uh huh. Do you want me to make that? Okay. Uh, another going? another product request. Any plans for a stereo transmitter, IFB or otherwise? Yeah. Um. No. Right now, the protocol that we're using for our modulation really doesn't allow for that. Uh, we really need to stick to kind of a really good, clean mono feed. Maybe once the ecosystem's flushed out, we can work on more specialty items. Luckily, the D2RX does exist. It's battery powered, USB-C powered, can hop on a camera for a camera hop, and just requires two transmitters rather than just the one. But it's not the worst thing in the world, and it does exist. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, there was another uh, question on Facebook asking for that um, an IEM receiver as well. I am, uh, you know. yeah, I, I, I hear you. I'm letting you know. Um, you so are seen. Uh, is are the is the transmitter still restricted to 540 megahertz and up, or is there are there plans to access 470 uh, to 540? At some sure. point. Sure. So we're very controversial in not wanting to go below 550, mm -hmm. and we have almost good reasons. We can't. <laughs> almost. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, and then I mean the other good reason is the fact that like walkie talkies and and emergency bands in major cities, 470 is not the answer. It's temporarily, it feels good in the moment, uh, but you may, maybe you shouldn't rely upon it because walkies can blow you out of the water in close proximity. Uh, let's say Homeland Security wants to fire up some other signals on that band and you weren't alerted because of course not, why would you be alerted? Uh, so like, that's fine. And while we probably should explore 500 to 550, the international audience sits still in the 600, 700, 800s. And while the U.S. is a very big market, uh, we, we're trying to only make one product that's available to everyone. We're still a small brand, and we can't be making dozens of SKUs. Mm, got it. We're trying our best. All right. And uh, right now, the last question from Castillo Sound Direct again. Uh, does the RF distributor have any bandpass filters built in? No. Uh, we are currently wide open. So we do have some bandpass filters in the sense of like below 470, above one gigahertz. But like we're trying to give you the full spectrum of what's possible for global one band as well as other bands that you may already operate in if you have some other brand of gear. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Well, Andrew, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time to show us nice. all these wonderful things. Uh, you're going to be at the Expo in I'm New at York? the Expo in a couple of weeks. So if you're in New York, come by, say hi. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fun show. And afterwards, uh, we always come and find some other fun things to do, too. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, thank you so much again. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, you know, stay tuned for more great stuff from NAB and 2024.